Mayor, are we ready? All right. I This, Come on! This is going to be special. All right, Mayor. How are you doing? Good to see you, Jim. Vince, yeah. tell us a little bit about your NLC experience to, thus far. Well, to be perfectly honest, Jim, um, when I first got introduced to NLC, I was uh, given some discouraging uh, information about it. I was told that it wouldn't do anything for me, don't waste your time. But I'm, a, I'm the type of person let me see for myself. And I've been coming since 2009. A member of several of the boards and councils, certainly the small cities council is near and dear to my heart, but uh, certainly NLC has been a big, big influence on what we do in Union City. The stage is yours. Thank you. Well, good evening. All right, all right. It's good to be here amongst all of you, but certainly it's great to share stories about some of the challenges that many of us have. And I was raised by a woman to, to, to tell me that challenges are merely opportunities. So certainly I want to talk about an opportunity and certainly uh, Clarence certainly shared something a moment ago that I was going to share. I want to give a shout out to my colleagues because we believe in the spirit of partnership. And if you're out there, I know you're out there, Angelette, Brian, uh, Joyce, and certainly, just, just wave your hand, because this is not about Mayor Vince Williams. This is about what we do for our citizens. Uh, we, we have certainly uh, undertaken what we call our rebuild, rebrand, and revitalize opportunity in our city. And what that is, is we were given the opportunity in our city of almost 25,000 folks. We had a mall that was on life support, if you will. Uh, it was one of the most premier malls in, in, the hey, in its heyday, uh, and certainly uh, many of you probably, if you visited the metro Atlanta area, you visited that mall. It was the Shannon Mall, and then it was the Union Station Mall. But in 2010, the mall died. It shut its doors. There were small business owners in that mall that depended on the doors being open to make opportunity for their families but the mall died. And not only that, when it died, it died off of our tax roll. That was a huge burden for our city. You know, so certainly we had to, to, to reinvent, but think about what are we gonna do with this area? Because many of us were asked each and every day, what are you gonna do about the mall? What's gonna happen? So we had the opportunity to sit down, really refocus on what do we need to do to bring life back into this area? So with us being a small city within the metro uh, Atlanta area, uh, we, we provide a small city charm and affordability while still providing ease of access to amenities of a major metropolitan area. And one of our biggest selling points is that we have a very close proximity to Hartsfield Jackson, which is the world's largest and busiest airports. So that was huge for us. So that is one thing that we used in our toolbox to be able to talk to possible prospects to come to the area. So we were fortunate to, uh, really, my first year as elected mayor, uh, 2014, we had an opportunity to close the deal on selling that 90-acre property. Well, it was, it was poised to be just an industrial development. That was good. It was going to bring jobs. But we, we said we need to do something totally different. We need to be able to create a model for other cities that are going through the same thing that we went through. So this is the first time that this type of development has been put together where you're going to bring industrial warehousing, but also Hollywood. And when I say Hollywood, we're going to have one of the largest film stage studios in Union City right on our front corridor, right at our front door. So with that, uh, we have the proximity of four interstates. Uh, many of you travel ar ar around uh, the country, so many of you probably have gone down some of these interstates, I-85, I-285, I-75, and I-20. But what, 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 what is one of the steps you know, that, that's going to make us attractive to bring Hollywood into Union City? Well, first, we've got to think about what's going to benefit us as 
the new home of film studios. Well, film studios, when they come into your area, they immediately need more of what you're already using, dry cleaners, hair salons, Home Depot, Lowe's, all of those things. So I tell you, there is not a day since we closed that deal that my phone is not ringing asking about, can we come and talk to you? There are some folks that you just, you, get, you, get, you gotta talk to them, but you gotta feel what is gonna be the best benefit. You know, there are some things you don't want in your city. So certainly, we have had a great opportunity with listening to retail, restaurant, and other ancillary type businesses that are looking forward to come in and get an opportunity to be a part of this. Uh, one of the things we were able to do was we created and adopted a redevelopment plan. In Georgia, adopting a redevelopment plan allows cities to take advantage of incentives that would not otherwise have been afforded to them. So one of the biggest opportunities we have had is the Opportunity Zone. So when you create these jobs and when you share this information with the prospective developer or the prospective business, the Opportunity Zone affords them $3,500 per full-time job for all, up to 10 years. So that's a huge, when you add it up, that's a huge financial benefit to them. We also in, uh, uh, created and established our tax allocation district, which to many of you probably is a tax increment financing di district or TIF to assist with financing economic development. And we sought participation from the, uh, with the assistance of our local county. So that was established in 2007. The TAD district had yet to generate any significant funds because the city was still rebounding from the Great Recession, which affected all of us. So certainly the TAD resources and the adoption demonstrated the city's willingness to invest and direct resources to the redevelopment area. So many of the big incentives that um, larger cities have Unfortunately, small cities have to be creative. So the great thing that we did, we worked together, worked with our county, worked with our uh, regional development authority, and that afforded us those opportunities. But there was a great deal of state lobbying that went into this as well to get these incentives in place so that we could bring these opportunities in our area. Public service, let me share with you, public service is the real driving force behind every success the team you see achieves and will achieve as we move forward. The city continued its planning efforts with the regional government. The city also took advantage of its economic development partners. Uh, we obtained planning assistance and grant assistance from the Atlanta Regional Commission to further study the area through its Livable Centers Initiative Grant. Going forward, the city is now able and, and eligible to seek implementation funds and also because it was awarded the initial LCI planning uh, grant, that afforded the opportunity for them to pour those dollars back into our area, but also give incentives to those prospective businesses that want to come into the area. One of the things that, um, that challenged many of us was coming out of the worst economic recession that any of us living today have probably witnessed. And we have to realize, and we know, and we'll probably hear more about this tomorrow, uh, there are going to be other economic recessions as we continue to move and grow forward. But one of the great things about bringing the film industry in is workforce development. Workforce development is making sure that you got those people ready to go and ready to work when they're ready to light these cameras. So one of the things that I shared with those prospective business owners and, and the film folks from uh, Turner and Universal Films was to let them know that we want an opportunity for our young people to get in on the ground floor of this opportunity. So last week I worked with uh, one of the local universities, but also I had a meeting with all of the area principals. There was approximately six, six of those schools, but also worked with the 404 Film Studio Partners, and we have created an opportunity where we're going to work with the seniors that will be graduating this year where they will go into a pilot program that is going to afford them a, uh, uh, an opportunity to get, to get a certificate. It takes two semesters for them to get the certificate. As soon as they get the certificate, they are ready to go to work. So it is no way 
that any student cannot take advantage of the opportunity of being right there on the ground. Everybody, when you hear about uh, film opportunities, you automatically think about, oh, I want to be the director, I want to be the actor. Everybody can't be Clarence. You know, that's okay. But you, you got to have those other people that make the film. You got to have your, your gophers, your gaffers, all of those folks matter. But what a lot of people don't realize, many of those people make upwards of $75,000 and up a year. What high school student graduating out of high school, 12th grade, do you know, besides Justin Bieber, <laughs> makes 75 grand a year and upwards? So with that opportunity, that's going to open up many doors for a lot of our local kids who are challenged with getting into school. But also, I had an opportunity to work with a lot of philanthropic uh, individuals who have already told me, when you're ready, we got the money for you. So that is going to be fantastic for those young people. But we got to make sure as elected officials, but not only that, as parents and leaders in our communities, that we instill in them that we're going to leave this place better than we found it because we want you to do just the same. I want to tell you, um, the film studio alone will generate approximately 800 to 1,200 jobs during its first full year of being open. So with that, if you think about the first year, 1,200 jobs over the next five to 10 years, think about how many jobs that brings into your area. But not only that, we will be able to employ a lot of the young people that are in the area, but also through that, you have those young people and their families spending and generating the money right back into the local community, but also bleeds over into your next door neighbor's community and also throughout the state and the rest of the area as well. So this is going to be an opportunity that is huge for not only Union City, but the entire region. So we have, we've gotten support from the governor's office. We've gotten support from, as I said earlier, our, uh, our local county commissioners. But also, uh, one of the things that I want to focus on as we continue to move forward with this opportunity is being able to work with our neighbors, uh, uh, our local cities that are right next door to us. Because if we're working all of our students that are in the Union City area, we got to realize that all of those students can't do all of the work that's in the area. So there's opportunity for my Fairburn, my Riverdales, my, all of the South Fulton cities, and, and also Clayton County as well. Uh, so certainly, you know, certainly that's a, that's a big woo, you know, so certainly those are things that we got to think about. We got to get out of these silos thinking that, you know, we're just concerned about what's happening in our area because what happens next door, soon it starts knocking on your door. Workforce development, we talked about that. That is going to be huge, uh, but also you know, we, we need to look at some of the, the other credits that come from that. From the state of Georgia, we're going to get uh, huge Georgia film tax credits, the Opportunity Zone, as I spoke of earlier, and uh, this is also going to spur opportunities for existing businesses to thrive and continue to maintain their businesses, but also you get hotels, I, 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 as I said earlier, I got businesses already calling, so we will have other hotels in the area, other restaurants, job training, new development, which when you talk about new development, that increases your general tax base, uh, base. So certainly we are excited about that. But in doing so, let me share with all of you, you've got to make sure that you have vision and you adopt plans for your community, particularly when major businesses close. You know, one of the things we did uh, when we knew we were having challenges with the mall, uh, we started looking at, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to get there? We didn't have all the answers, but we knew we had to put a plan in place. Unfortunately, we went through about uh, three, four years of, 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 of an empty mall, off the tax rolls, many, biz many other businesses that were within that mall closing, and around that it was like a virus or an infection. Other businesses started to close as well. So we were fortunate enough that we had a lot of businesses who said, we're not giving up. We're staying here. We're staying here. And, and as they continued to stay, we supported them, but also we had other businesses that say, we want to come to your area. 
When we sealed the deal with 404 Studio Partners and Rooker Development to come in and take that property over, one of the things that, that started to happen, many, many businesses are knocking on the door. Now, we haven't heard from Starbucks. I know somebody mentioned Starbucks earlier. You know, so certainly we're waiting to hear from them. But certainly um, political leadership has got to be paramount. And when I say political, I don't mean political in, in, in the form that many of us think about when we hear political. Because political means coming together. We see the fighting and the infighting day in and day out in the, at, at, at the White House in, in, under the Gold Dome in Georgia, but also under the Dome here in, in Washington. We have got to learn how to work to, together. If we don't do that, our country is going to be decimated. We've got to learn how to work together. And one of the things um, I instill, <laughs> we've got to learn to work together when we're lobbying. We've got to make sure that our lobbying efforts are fair across the board. You know, we can't just, just because it's money in somebody else's pocket, it takes food off the table for many numbers of folks. So we've got to make sure that we're doing the right thing all times because people, when they put their vote and their trust in us, one of the things they think about each and every day is their families. And they, put a vo they vote for you. They're trusting you. They're putting their trust in you. And when you put your trust in someone, think about what, you, what you're expecting from them. That's someone that is going to be able to carry the water for you when you can't carry it for yourself. I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Thank you, Great sir. Job. Thank you. Hollywood. We're going to be going down to Union City for our next uh, big productions. I think that's fantastic. And I think the theme there, too, is the idea that whether it's in your community, you may not get a movie studio, but I think the message there is identify what that is. Get a, a, in front of a, a mall closure or a company closing and start figuring out and coming together about what that's going to be.